Okay, my friends, press release today, just dated today, March 29, 2022, and they realize now that the atomic model is not correct and they cannot fit it because they have come up with new photographic techniques to actually view the particles and it, they don't work. So it says it's finally become possible not only to capture the structure of molecules but even to record their motion and interactions in videos. It's um, called cinematic molecular science. However, it is with this leap in our capacity to visualize the invisible that the ball and stick model, which is what they, these little balls and sticks, um, that ball and stick model just doesn't work. It becomes a hindrance rather than a help. It just doesn't work. When researchers from the Department of Chemistry at University of Tokyo tried to fit these models with the images they were seeing, they ran into some problems. It did not work. Now, and it never is going to work, and they're trying to figure a way to make the Bohr model work with it. It's never, ever, ever going to work because the Bohr model is wrong. The Bohr model has one gigantic proton and another gigantic neutron about the same size as this in the core and then little tiny tiny little electrons floating around that doesn't work everything is made of dipoles and instead of they being protons looking like that they look like this and every one is a little magnetic particle we always call them electrons so there's going to have the core is going to have a ton of electrons and there's going to be so many in there that they won't accept any more so this one will try to get in and they'll say no you have to stay in an quantum distance and the bigger this gets you see the sizes all this is getting bigger 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 and the bigger they get the more and more and more electrons they can hold in their orbits and at some point when you get so big like plutonium and uranium they start to just about fall apart on their own and if you bang them together they'll just go flying and that's nuclear explosion and then you have nuclear waste you have chunks like this laying around and that's when you have radioactive particles they just decay and blow off pieces. Now, this is the new model. The Bohr model doesn't work and that's why they had to change this. Now, they have to now look at the electron flood theory which says, again, let me just reiterate this just to be absolutely no question, nothing that I can find and nothing that exists does not consist of these two particles. They are normally attached together. And they are normally in matter in balls like this. 1839 make a stable proton. And for some reason, there's a resonance shaking value that makes protons stable in these periods. That's what this periodic chart means. And this is not wrong. But they're periods of quantities of, instead of just one and the next one and the next one and the next one being protons, there's 1839. 40 whatever it is 38 whatever it comes to and by the time you get up into uranium or plutonium you're into hundreds of thousands of particles it's not just 92 or whatever it is up in that area there is bazillions because every neutron consists of 1840 and every proton consists of 1839 and electrons are just one so if you had a certain number of them, you'd have a certain number on the outside that want to get in and they're just held away from stability of the core. All right? You can lose one or two in a core and still have what they call an isotope and it'll be fairly stable, but it's not as stable like it had exactly the right number. Simple as that. This is the basic, not, not a single thing isn't made of that. That's all there is. Those will burn into you. These will bounce off of you. And that is just nothing more than two of these little bar magnets back to back. Light is a photon. Electrons are static, electricity, lightning, burny little buggers. These are bouncy little buggers. Okay, my friends, this should be very interesting. They have just decided that the nuclear model is not correct. And they have to change the way we look at the periodic chart. This was always the periodic chart before. Now it's all, all new because it didn't work. And when I say it didn't work, they realize it didn't work. Here's what they say right there. They now can see these particles, which I've been showing the particles. They say using state-of-the-art approach, they can image samples at the atomic scale 
scientists observed that traditional molecular models did not fit the images they saw. And so this is what they're doing. They're looking down in this range. That's the electron microscope range. All right, very, very tiny. And they're trying to fit the Bohr model into this. They can't do it. When you see this right here, that is a quantum soup. There are clusters of stability in here, which are the molecules, which we have always considered these little balls like this. But well, they're not balls like this. Every one of these balls, where you see a little ball on the end of a stick, is like that. It's not one ball. It's like this. So you have just a, a, a quantum soup with centers of stability. And that's what these are, centers of stability. And I'm going to show you that happening in a salt experiment. Let's take a look at that, and then we're going to come back to this, and I'm going to try to explain what the problems are with physics in general and the, the model. It has to be dipoles. And I'm going to show you that in a dipole salt vibration experiment. It's very simple things we can, we can understand what reality is. Okay, this is a fabulous channel, Brush Pup. Amazing resonance experiment. Resonance means vibrations and then you lock in at a certain frequency. A resonant frequency means a stable frequency. And this is what Tesla was talking about. Not necessarily stability for him, but energy is related to frequency and vibration. The more frequency and vibration, the more energy. And we actually construct atoms because of frequency. Now, I'm not certain exactly how that happens, but something creates a frequency. The more particles congeal together, they create more and more frequencies, and then they, at one exact frequency, boop, they lock in. You're going to see this. Now, what we're, I'm going to be showing you here is, this is from Brush Pub, and what we're going to be looking at right here is the test table. And what does that test table do? That's a piece of steel, all right, magnetic steel. I mean, not necessarily magnetic, but if, if you shake the um, electricity one side to plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, you just created a vibrating electric field. That's what's considered frequency, the frequency of the vibration. If it's just nice and low frequency, it's just bouncing up, bouncing down, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Then it goes plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. and that's what we're going to see. We're going to start out with what I would consider to be hydrogen. Hydrogen is on that periodic chart that we just saw, the tiniest little dot. And that only can hold on to just a very few little electrons surrounding it. But as you get bigger and bigger, they can hold on to tons, as you will see. So here we go. We're going to come up to, as it's uh, going through here, and they're going to run the frequency here. And you'll see a little sine wave. You see this? That means up, down, up, down, plus, minus, plus, minus. And, they're in a, and salt is a polar molecule. Why is it polar? NaCl, positive, negative, or a, a, whatever. As the pitch of the tone increases, the patterns form more complex. So just exactly what Tesla said, frequency and vibration. Now, I'm going to stop it right here. That, to me, is the pattern of hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen has a, just one little tiny spot in the center, which is, they would call a nucleus of, of, of a proton. But a proton is really 1,839 electrons. So it can only control just a very small region, and you have these four spots. Exactly what helium would do, it would, it, helium would be right in the same range, because helium is on the same um, group as the, the hydrogen. So it has the same orbitals, because it's down here. Once you hit up the next line, you're into the rule of eight, and you're going to see that very clearly. So here's what we have for, for me. This is a hydrogen. Now, hydrogens come in a couple of different varieties. You can have H1, H2, H3, which is just more protons, really, in the center. Hydrogen isn't just one proton. And hydrogen can have isotopes, too. All, pro all molecules have isotopes. And you could take away a few of these electrons. It's still considered the... the 
the element that it, it is, but it's an isotope. And that means it has a half-life. It want to collect some more of these to become stable. That's instability of the core. All right. So now, here we have hydrogen. And we have only this ability in this particular very close range to influence any electrons. Now, as we go into more and more particles and more and more frequency, see, we're at 30, 345 cycles per second. So it's going 345 times a second, shaking those polar molecules. And then at exactly a certain like apparently it's 345, boop, they lock in. Now, what happens next as we go higher in the frequencies? Okay, we're going to go higher up in the frequencies. It'll start shaking again. See, we're going to move up. So now we're putting more and more particles. Watch this. This is called a rule of eight. And there it is right there as close as you can. You can't hardly miss that. Nobody has eye, eyeballs can miss that. 1033 hertz. All right, so we were in a lower hertz. We only had that very basic core. Now we have the rule of eight showing up perfectly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are domains. And this central core now is much bigger. It's like, think of that as being round, but it's bigger. And because it's bigger, it can hold on to more and more domains. And the bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it gets, the more and more domains you can see. You get out to here, you know, look at the, 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 and all of them, if you really look at them closely, you can find the rule of eight patterns. The, the, some of them are very strange, but usually if you look around enough, you can find the patterns. And it just gets more and more complicated as you get higher and higher frequencies. You see that? Look at that. Isn't that fabulous? All that is is just higher and higher frequencies. And they get bigger and bigger and bigger masses. But they only lock in at these resonance frequency hertz spots. And they just keep getting more and more complicated as you get bigger and bigger. All right? And at some point you're into helium. I mean into... Um, plutonium, uranium, these big, 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 big particles. And there are so many domains, they're ready to fall apart already. If you shock them, they will just fall apart. They'll just explode. And then you'll have chunks. You'll have a chunk like this. It's called nuclear radiation. And what it is, is now instead of having the, the, the correct thing, a nice perfect pattern you'll have all kind of crazy stuff and it will want to decay and it'll throw off chunks big chunks and those are the killer chunks though that because that's nuclear decay nuclear radiation now and i think there is a way to remediate this with using extremely high powered lasers through the venturi but again i didn't find any interest in that so i'm off that case for now but this to me is what the nuclear atomic structure is and they realize it now. That's why they changed the, the periodic chart. All right, here's another one. This is the actual core of the nucleus. This is Latham's crazy machines. Very, very good. Nicely done. This is the surrounding electrons. All right, the core turns gravity. It's, it turns dark, basically. In the center of this is going to be dark matter. And it's surrounded by the white particles. So, and, and I showed you all those crystallizations. I don't know how all this exactly happens and whether those, those patterns form around dark matter, which could very likely could be, because the dark matter has much more mass than the white matter. The white matter has almost mass, no mass at all. It's almost zero, but it is extremely glowy, as you could see. The well, you you saw the pattern of the the salt. <laughs> it, was, it was glowy, but anyway, what you would see in this nucleus, if it was a real nucleus, would be all of that white particles, the pushy shovey ones, wrapped around a black core, which is this. So these are the pushy shoveys. And they want to be attached to that black core. It sucks them in, but the core stays in the center. It will always, 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 everything there is, 
is coated with the white particles because they want to get away from each other. So they'll push the black particles to the center of everything. Every single thing you see is coated with the pushers. And that's why we see bounce color bounces back at us. This, you're never going to see anything. This doesn't emit. It doesn't absorb. It doesn't reflect. And I have found out these dark particles do not compress. But inside of here, if you had six out here, you'd have six big balls, the black ones in here. But they'd be the same size as these. Only these can blow up and shrink down. These cannot. They're just one solid big chunk. Now, what happens when other electrons try to get into this? Because this is a, just a sucker. This just wants more and more electrons. But these guys say no. We are surrounding you, and we will stand guard around you. Anybody comes, we will not let them come in, because we have just enough guys. If we need more guys, we'll get them. If we have too many guys, we'll push a guy away. So what happens? A guy comes up, another electron comes in and says, Ooh, 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 I'd love to be with that black spot. He might not say, ooh, 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 but he'd say, I'd love to be with that black spot. Boom. Here comes the, the, the electron. Pow! And these, these guys say, no, no, no. You cannot come here. And I said, well, please, please, please. It's a no, absolutely not. And he said, well, what happens if it gets hot? Well, if it gets hot, and if it gets too hot, we're just going to throw you the hell out of here because this, everything's going to just get crazy. And it's starting to get hot, and it's getting real hot. It's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And all of a sudden, pow, it'll take off because it becomes ionized. That's what ionization means. Get out of here.